The crate must have had bananas or something in it. It's empty now. There probably isn't a single newspaper between Moscow and Madrid that's not reporting on the burglary. I'm famous! Unfortunately, not for the sort of elegantly executed theft I'd like to be known for. Burglary in British Museum, one casualty. 5,000 pounds damage, culprit unknown. Return of the Raven? I'd have escaped anyway, but Inch just couldn't resist playing with dynamite. I hope the security guard recovers soon. They won't let me ride along in the freight car, not even if I ask nicely. A leather bag like the ones used by country doctors for carrying their equipment. Some of the passengers got off the train to stretch their legs, but this man started his journey right here in Zurich. He waited a good ten minutes for the train and began to get impatient. Clothes maketh the man. Put a uniform on a short, old, rather chubby little man and they'll show him all due respect, even if he's only a constable. The uniform alone gives him power and that counts for a lot in this part of the world. This is the saloon car. Fully furnished with a bar and all the niceties. The ladies and gentlemen would have a fit if I just waltzed in there wearing these clothes. If I try to just get on the train, the conductor would probably stop me and might even turn me over to the police. I can't risk that. The conductor from the train, he's keeping a watchful eye on his passengers and their luggage. The train's been held up and he seems to want to prevent further delays. Sometimes you can find useful things in a waste bin, but this one seems to have been emptied recently. A handy Swiss army knife. A good friend gave it to me. Inch loves the spotlight and has a flair for the dramatic. Why else would he call himself the Raven? I don't like having to risk my own neck as part of his drama. What's the point of leaving messages for his opponent? Huh. A ticket for a trip on the MS Lydia from Venice to Cairo. Some banknotes and a passport. Blank. No personal info, no picture. Inch has brilliant contacts in the underworld. He knows the best counterfeiters, technicians, pickpockets, and con men. He remains anonymous, though. Most of them don't even know they're working for him. Mr. X, his contact in Cairo, 
probably doesn't have a clue who he is. Huh. I could probably pry the bottom boards off without too much effort. They're thin, and the nails are short. Perfect. It looks like a normal crate. It's now or never. Hey, you! Scrap! Uh, yes, sir. Let the games begin. Excuse me, gentlemen. <laughs> Can't you see that I am talking to the constable? The train is leaving in a few minutes, sir. I have to ask you to board it now. We should get on. Perhaps we'll be able to continue our conversation during the trip. I won't stand in the way. <laughs> Where's my bag? You left it right there. I know that. I want to know where it is now. I, I don't know. I I'll look for it right away. If you gentlemen would get on the train in the meantime... I will hold you and your employers liable for this. I'm sure he'll find the bag. Come on, Dr. Gebhardt. I will help you with your luggage. Fine. The conductor doesn't really seem to know where to search for the lost bag. Finding a particular piece of luggage at a railway station is like finding a needle in a haystack. You seem to be searching for something. Can I help? Go away. There's no money to be earned here. That's not what I mean. I just thought, if you're looking for a brown bag... Why? Did you steal one? If that were true, I wouldn't be offering to help you. I saw a little blonde boy take the bag. He ran off with it, over there. Really? Hmm. Thanks. Isn't that the bag? Where? Nothing personal. No! Oh, man! Let me have a look. Damn, I can't let the professor see me. I shadowed him for days in London. He might recognize me. Calm down, See what that means. You My God, I barely look like myself. The sink, the sink. No, that won't help me now. Professor Lucien hasn't slept a single night in the cabin yet. The towel is unused. If I twisted it, then I'd have a sort of rope. doesn't give up easily. Professor Lucio seems to travel light. The Baroness's luggage takes up half a freight car. It was the only window that was open in the station, so it was a good way to get onto the train. And now, it might be my only way out. Hmm. The 
window to the right should be the Baroness's cabin, and the one on the left is the saloon car. The roof could be my escape route. level with the roof, but the roof is too slanted and smooth to climb. I twisted the towel to make it into a sort of rope. You have to be able to improvise, as my master used to say. <laughs> There's nothing quite like traveling on a train. with a heavy padlock. the freight car with fresh air. It also seems big enough to climb through. I'd say I found my way in. The cover has two hinges on the back. It's possible to open it, but the two screws on the front hold it closed. You'll get it back in Venice. Frightening me like that. I could have fallen under the wheels. I thought you were a ghost. Ghosts don't exist. They do too. One just flew past my window. Be off with you. Oh, man. I can use these. Phew, that was close. He left the lock open. How convenient. Let's see. A wrench, you don't say. This is too easy. I should be able to move about freely in the train, as long as I keep away from Professor Lucien. The other guests don't know me and conductors change several times during the journey. A new face shouldn't seem suspicious to anyone. Young man? Uh, yes, sir? Uh, tell me, when did they switch to self-service on the Orient Express? Should they not have informed the passengers about that in advance? Uh, forgive me, sir. I was... And what about my bag? Hmm? Did your colleague find it? I'm sorry, sir. I, I don't know. I expected as much. There will be consequences. And now, bring me my coffee. Of course, sir. Asshole. Huh. A dish with old people's candy. Butterscotch, I think. Several special keys on the keychain. This one should open the cabin door from outside. Lucky for me that I have the key and the people outside don't. That way the locked door will keep them at bay a little while longer. 
let's see. It fits! Huh, a lot of odds and ends. A hairnet, batteries, a half pack of cigarettes, an unused toothbrush. The bartender probably has to serve as a jack of all trades, like a concierge in a hotel. So, is there anything useful? Here we go, a small shaving mirror. Even pigs get to drink from the finest porcelain. A small portable radio. The reception is surprisingly good here in the mountains. I won't be able to use the radio, but the antenna, on the other hand, a thin, short metal rod that can be extended. Something like that might come in handy. There's still some coffee left. for the gentleman. Do you know what the problem with people like you is? Um, you mean our lack of a sense of duty, or our skin color, or a lack of respect for our elders? <laughs> we have so many flaws. He didn't even want to hear why it took so long to get his coffee. He just wanted to tear into someone, just wanted to assert his will. It's a sad life if you have to pump yourself up by deflating others. The old lady didn't get on in Zurich, and she doesn't look like someone from Nancy or Basel. I'm guessing she boarded in Paris. Uh, she seems familiar somehow. The younger woman seems to be some kind of carer or companion for the older lady. I wouldn't like to be with her all day long. She radiates a certain restlessness and unease. The elderly woman's carer can't keep her hands still, so she's knitting. Can I bring you ladies anything? Is everything satisfactory? Everything is wonderful, young man. Very good. Got it. They should have been able to open the door with pliers. I think the coast is clear. I assume Inch is also in the compartment. He'll probably find some excuse to sneak out to trigger the blackout and engage the emergency brakes. No idea how he expects to pull that off. He usually leaves me in the dark about such things. Even after months of partnership, he still doesn't trust me completely. Obviously, they managed to open the door. I wonder who or what the archaeologist thinks locked it. Did he connect it to the burglary in London? Uh, probably not. The violinist was already on the train in Zurich. Handsome devil. I'm glad my girlfriend is here. She loves to make me jealous. And once I'm raging mad, she leans forward and whispers one of those phrases that only she can say. Huh. Is this a Stradivarius or something like that? If it is, maybe I should take it with me during the blackout. With any luck, I'm going to be a happy family man soon, and I'll need a few francs, lira, or marks. Self-control. Side jobs always lead to complications. There are enough unknowns in our plan as it is. No need to add more. We're still in the Swiss Alps. We should reach the Italian border in half an hour. Climbing over the coal car is the only way to get into the driver's cab while the train is moving. I can't imagine Inch climbing over it to trigger a blackout up front. I bet he paid someone to do his dirty work. Inch almost never takes personal risks, and usually he tries to keep his hands clean. Some maps, info for travelers, some pictures, and the schedule, all neatly hung up with magnets.
shows the different routes the Orient Express took in the course of its long history. It's larger than the other notices, and thus hung up with larger magnets. <laughs> I'll take one with me. so sticky that it will hold the mirror without any trouble. As I expected, it sticks. I'll tie the magnet to the string. Done. There's the guard. The safe is directly beneath the ventilation shaft. I could shimmy down the shaft and hit him on the head from behind. Uh-oh. Are you okay, Robert? Nothing to report, sir. At ease. Any suspicious passengers come aboard in Zurich, sir? Hmm. Not really. It could be anyone and no one. But we've received support from the Swiss police. A certain Constable Zellner. Oh? Very motivated. Might get on our nerves. That limits my options. I can't overpower two people. I don't think I'll be able to slip into the carriage unseen after all. Oh, there has to be a way. I have to keep Inch happy. How do I get you onto the safe? Or on top of it? The safe is directly beneath the ventilation shaft. And Inch said something about a blackout and a tunnel. I could use the moments of confusion and darkness to toss the letter onto the safe. Might work as long as I manage to open the ventilation shaft and choose the right moment. A wrench from the toolbox should be useful. Sooner or later, the carer will miss her wool, even though it's just a little bit. That's what I call DIY. The mirror is stuck to the top of the antenna, which I can extend about 60 centimeters. The wool string isn't particularly strong, but it should hold the weight of the magnet. I could unscrew the screws, but I should only open the cover inside the tunnel. that on the floor. Yes, sir. 
That was close. If the second screw makes that much noise, it's over for me. Should. What? The light's gone out! Flashlights! Ah! Get off me! There, sir! An envelope! My dear Nico, you should take a closer look at the box. Ah, what the dickens? It's, it's a away with it. Take cover. What's the meaning of this? What do you want here? I'm fine. Thanks for asking. I didn't ask how you were. I asked why you spoke to me in public. What was the point of the bomb? Isn't that obvious? I wanted to dispose of Legrand as spectacularly as possible. You almost disposed of me as well. Did I not tell you to deliver the letter and leave immediately? People could have died. But of course, that was the point of the bomb. I don't want to hurt anyone. You know that. And you know that I don't care what you want. Obey my orders and nothing will happen to you, and you'll soon be a rich man. I won't blindly obey orders anymore. I want to know what the plan is. You know as much as you need to know. We will steal the second eye in Cairo before the eyes of the world. The theft of the first eye got everyone's attention. Legrand's death would have increased the excitement immeasurably. But this will do just as well. We'll have a showdown instead. The Raven versus the Inspector. That should also electrify the press. Why are you doing this? I thought it was about the jewels. Why are we making life difficult for ourselves and attracting so much attention? It's about more than that. It's about performing on the greatest stage of all. About the end of a legend. You'll see when it's time for you to see. Until then, just do as I say. And what if I just leave? You knew who you were dealing with the whole time. I don't have time for your hypocrisy. You always knew who you were dealing with. If, for your peace of mind, you have to pretend to be innocent in this situation, so be it. But we both know that you begged me to let you in on the heist. And in this business, one must get one's hands dirty. But, James! James! Where on earth are you? During the trip, we'll keep a low profile and steer clear of Legrand. I, uh... I lost the ticket and the fake passport. I swear, if my arm was still good enough to climb, I'd have disposed of you long ago. Ah, oh, well. I'd prefer that no one see you while you're on board. Smuggle yourself on board and stay under cover until Cairo. Okay. 
and no more games. Nothing that Legrand, the police, or anyone else could do to you compares to what I will do to you if you don't follow my plan. James, there you are. Is the inspector to carry my luggage onto the ship all by himself? He thinks he knows me. He thinks I'm stupid and weak. I have him right where I want him. Here's a young thief who'll show an old timer how it's done. Even if it means a bit of solitary confinement. I hope the dock workers have left the cargo hold. I better just take a peek. Or at least I'd take a peek if it were possible to open it. Ugh. I'm lying on a pile of clothes. Huh. Different fabrics. Some rougher, some softer. This one feels like a fine net. No, I don't think this will be much use. This trunk is built like a coffin. Huh feels like metal. Angular. I think it's the trunk lock. Okay, where's the screwdriver? Uh, ha! Knife! Ugh. There's the screwdriver! So, if I just turn this... Uh, aha! Oh, you're kidding me! Seems to be a strap for holding something on the shelf above the trunk. <sighs> Unfortunately, I can't reach the clasp. The stuff over there doesn't look like it was recently loaded. Probably part of the ship's inventory. Two metal pipes. Stable, about ten meters apart. All right then, I'll just drive the blade through the end of the strap. Tools and spare parts, I'd say. The knife isn't stuck firmly enough in the strap to endure a throw. I'll pull it out and try my luck with the metal clasp. Oh, brilliant! Hopefully the clasp won't slip out of the box when I pull the strap. Looks like I hit the jackpot on my first try. There's nothing more to be had. The pipe rolled up against the shelf, but it's still out of my reach. Ugh, I can't reach it. Huh. It's worth a try. Ta-da! Uh, that should hold. My best chance. Steady as a rock.
Mulligans. Oh, great. Okay, I'll tie him up and then get out of here before they start looking for him. And I already have an idea where I can hide. I can't imagine that he'd just leave. Yeah, and without saying goodbye either. No need to be frightened, young lady. What are you doing here? I wanted to see you. This is hardly the time or the place. What happened on the train? Nothing, nothing bad. Everyone is fine. Inch is dangerous, I warned you. I know, that's why we're being careful. And you have a smart and handsome young thief at your side. And humble too. Don't worry, I'll take care of you. What have I done to deserve luck like this? Inch bothers me. He's shown what he's capable of. What if he finds out about our plan? How would he? We're careful. He's more ruthless than we expected. The bomb on the train. I don't want to think about it. We need to make sure that we stay calm. You mean that I stay calm? I'm not worried about you. I know you. Shall we go over the plan one more time? Good idea. We know that Inch hid the first eye in the Baroness's luggage. I'll break into her cabin and replace the eye with a fake. Right. We'll steal the second eye in Cairo. And Inch will be caught in the act. <laughs> it's simple. The devil is in the detail. I have to get into the Baroness's cabin undetected, then find the secret hiding place, and I can't leave any evidence behind. Yes. And Inch said something about a combination, so the hiding place might be locked. One step at a time. I think I'll assess the situation first. And I think I'll make myself comfortable for a little while. So this is how married life will be. Works for me. Everything went according to plan in London? Except for the explosion, yes. The Bobby was right on time. Because he had a good tip-off. I had enough time to take the eye. But unfortunately, there was no time to replace it with the fake. Where is it? A work of art. Almost as beautiful as the original. I can't tell the difference. Inch could. But if all goes to plan, he won't have a chance to take a closer look at the jewel until after the burglary at the Egyptian Museum. Will the Grand cause any trouble? Everything's still going according to plan. That means he's clever but not clever enough. And the Bobby? Peasant's cunning, nothing more. He won't be able to solve the puzzle on his own. There's still Inch. He doesn't suspect anything. We laid the foundation well. I've been his assistant for months already. He doesn't trust me, but he thinks he can play me for a sucker. That's enough. Speaking of Inch, I saw him talking to you in Venice. What was it about? He was angry because his attack on the train failed and because I lost my ticket. How did you get on the ship? As a stowaway, locked in a cold, dark cargo hold. Poor boy. I'll go out now and lead the police and master thieves around by the nose. I can think of something else to do. I can't.
the poster proudly announces the ship's first Atlantic crossing. The city of New York welcomes the MS Lydia. I'm sure I could help you if... Stand aside! If you told me what you're looking for... Were you just getting in my way? Now get out! I'll wait at the door, madam. Yes, yes! Oh, miss... Mayors, can I help you? No, I'm just having a look around the ship. Good day. Oh, that was close. Practicality was definitely placed ahead of design here. I guess the Lydia regularly docks at harbors that don't have their own gangways. And rather than make the passengers climb ladders, they opted for the less beautiful alternative. Lovely big towel. I hope tomorrow I'll have a chance to sunbathe and enjoy the rest of the trip. A deck chair in the sunshine on a cruise ship. I'd be a fool to miss out on that tomorrow, but I have to take care of my duties before I can relax in the sun. Fantastico! <laughs> Would it be okay for you if I get some fresh air up on deck? Of course, my dear. Give my regards to the sea. Wooden salad tongs, just small enough to carry around unseen. an expert, but I think that Mr. Kreutzer really is a very skilled violinist. At least, I liked it, and the captain was certainly smitten. Excuse me, gentlemen. She can't have meant you, Mr. Kreutzer. Why don't you just let me have a conversation with the young lady? I, I, I just wanted... Did you count the rings on your fingers, my dear? I think I'm going to stretch my legs. But, Mr. Kreutzer, please stay. You simply must tell me more about your wonderful violin. <sighs> if you insist. There seems to be tension between the violinist and the writer. I'd better not get involved. A wonderful concert, wasn't it? I wouldn't have expected you to be a connoisseur of classical music. Because I'm American? Because you're young, and friendly, and radiant. Someone like you doesn't have to know a lot to get along well in life. Are you easily prejudiced at your age? In my long experience, there's often a core of truth at the center of every prejudice. Prejudice is the reason of fools. Was that written in the book you once read? I've read many books. Good books. But not my books, you mean to say. You're a writer? Mm-hmm. 
What can I do for you, Miss... Mayors. You know, I'm not planning on throwing myself at a man. I'm glad to hear it. You have to work. Earn your own money. Oh, I will! My grades are excellent, and I really want to study acting in New York. None of my books has ever been made into a good film. The stories were twisted, shortened, and simplified so that even the dimmest fellow could follow them. I want to do theater and travel. I speak three languages. That would be three more than most people your age can speak. Do what you have to do, but stay away from bad men. Is this your first trip on the Lydia? That's quite enough. Life is too short for conversations like this. I I do wish that rather delightful Swiss policeman had come along. I heard you had an interesting trip on the train. It was thrilling. I'm hoping for an encore. Perhaps in Cairo. Mr. Kreutzer possesses impressive technique, don't you think? He certainly does. His numerous playmates in Austria can tell you more about it than I. You mean Mr. Kreutzer is a womanizer? I'm not talking about cheap skirts. I'm talking about expensive clothes. A man like him needs funds to support his lifestyle. Just go over to him, my dear. Tell the maestro that your family is wealthy. You have everything he's looking for. Money and a pretty face. Hold your tongue. Mr. Kreutzer. Lady Westmacher, please. Or did you have your eye on me, Mr. Kreutzer? Old, yes, but rich. Jezebel. Mr. Kreutzer. Maestro! That's better. Freeloader. You and Mr. Kreutzer, you seem to know each other. Not really, but I know his type. Parasites who cling to the rich and famous and suck them dry. The young, misunderstood painter. The innovative writer who writes books that no one wants to read. The musical talent that has to be supported. The ladies and gentlemen of high society let the others use them and call themselves patrons. Another word for fool. Didn't you finance archaeological excavations in the Near East and Egypt? For my husband, and I was there myself. I catalogued items for him, and I didn't show him off like a trophy at cocktail parties. But my son was one of them, the worst kind. The kind that sucks not only the money, but also the life right out of a person. May I take my leave? You may. Inch is intelligent and ruthless, a dangerous combination. He's not a brilliant planner, but he is smart and careful. He senses danger. I'm afraid he might suspect that something is wrong. A very fine handiwork. The model maker even wrote the name of the ship on the tiny life preservers. But the winter garden at the back of the saloon is missing. And the stern deck looks different. It was obviously made before the ship was remodeled. Come in. How can I help you, young lady? Are you the ship's doctor? Uh, yes, of course. You see, that's what I thought, because you've got a uniform and you work in the medical center. Well spotted, young lady. My name is Dr. Gebhardt. How can I help you? What are the other passengers like? Mm, listen, young lady, I, I do not really have time to chat right now. Today is my first day, and it is going mm, differently than I had expected. You do seem a little stressed. Maybe you should relax. Stress isn't good for you. <laughs> you're, you're right. If 
there is nothing else I can help you with. But you weren't really helpful at all. Maybe I'll come back later. Bye now. The only regular event seems to be the nightly drink in the saloon. Judging from the rest of the entertainment program, it seems necessary. Several journals and magazines. Ah, huh, this looks pretty interesting. Art and culture today. Ah, huh, there's something about the exhibition. Unique masterpieces exhibited for the first time together in their home country. Tireless efforts of Baroness von Trebitz. We briefly discussed whether we should try to steal the second eye here on the ship. The lack of escape routes and the 10 centimeter thick door to the safe settled the question. Some man and a talented musician, but he doesn't seem very happy. Hello, Mr. Kreutzer. Do you want to have a go at me, like the old witch in there? I just wanted to talk to you. Now is not the best time. I just wanted to tell you that I really loved your music, and that Lady Westmacott did not have the right to speak to you like that. Really? How do you know? You don't know me. Then... Did she have the right? No, she didn't. That cynical old witch enjoys exposing the weaknesses of others. Although we all have them. She as well. She lusts for recognition and acts as though it weren't so disgraceful. She rejects prizes and awards with snide remarks, but she's angry when others receive them. She needs to know that she's better than others. You seem to know her quite well. I've only met her once or twice. But I know her son and some of her friends. One friend of hers supported me for a long time. No one is brave enough to say it to her face, but everyone hates her. Her or her success? You're so talented. Why aren't you performing on the world's great stages? Fate, perhaps. Or bad luck. My parents opened every door for me and my sister and expected corresponding careers. Over-ambitious parents who forced their children to play music? No, it wasn't like that. I loved it. I loved to play the violin. They didn't have to force me. I wanted to do it on my own. I thought I would achieve my goals if only I worked hard enough. But it was not to be. What happened? In a more dramatic story, I'd say that I broke my hand just before my big break. Or that I was rejected because of my nationality or my name, or that I was brought down by a conspiracy. But nothing like that ever happened. I practiced like mad. Got better and better. Really good. But nothing happened. The right people never heard me. I was never in the right place at the right time. Can you imagine how it feels to always be on the cusp of a breakthrough? To be just one evening away from becoming an overnight sensation? To see how other, less talented violinists pass you by because you just aren't lucky enough? How terrible. For every star in the limelight, there are a dozen more that burn out unseen, fading month by month. I didn't want to be one of those people who waste their lives chasing dreams without realizing that they're unattainable. If I couldn't have the life that I always dreamt of, and that my family expected from me, then at least I could have the next best life. The next best life? Mansions, limousines, parties. Everything you could wish for. Though none of it belongs to me. The lady called you a freeloader. <laughs> An ugly word. But maybe not so far from the truth. 
I move with the rich and famous, and at first glance, I live exactly the life my father always wished for me. A carefree life, easy going. And I play the violin, which I always loved to do. But it's not really like that. It's empty. My life is just a shell. A show, and everyone knows it. I loved something once, and I burned for it. But now, the violin is just an accessory for practicing my real profession. And your family? How could I ever look them in the eyes? A failed violinist who gave up. What does the future hold for you? Isn't it obvious? My hands are starting to shake from alcohol. What will be left once I lose my good looks? I'll have nothing then. And so I'll put an end to it all. You can't say things like that. With my father's pistol, I always have it with me. It... it's gone! <laughs> Fate won't even grant me a quick death. Don't you think you can still make it? No. It's too late now. The real question is, did I give up too quickly back then? I don't know. Thank you for listening. Goodbye, Mr. Kreutzer. This should be the entrance to the cargo hold. Not really my concern. Bull, curling, shuffleboard, all the same to me. I'm not interested in any of that now. The two of them seem to be in a private conversation. I'd better not disturb them. When Adil and I were following the professor in London, I was disguised. But that doesn't mean he won't recognize me now. No, I won't talk to them as long as I can avoid it. Some sailors are standing at the table and studying a marine map. Good thing they're busy. I can have a look around without being disturbed. No idea what kind of flag this is. But the pole it's attached to could be very useful one day. It's about 80 centimeters long and looks quite stable. Yes, it's sturdy, but it's also too cumbersome to carry around. I have no idea where Inch had the fake jewel made, but it's amazing. Even someone with as much experience as I have has to look twice before realizing it's a fake. Ah, lovely big towel. The salad tongs won't be missed until breakfast. Hmm. I could tie the bath towel around the pole, put the pole across the ventilation shaft, and climb down with the help of the towel. Sounds like a plan. Hmm, a classic. The thief enters through the ventilation shaft. Can it really be that easy? No, 
It can't. The cover is screwed shut. No, there's no gap to put the pole in. I can't force the cover open. He has the enviable talent of being able to sleep anywhere, anytime. He once fell asleep on a cable car and only woke up after he'd already gone up the mountain and back down again. We booked this cabin because it's centrally located, easy to duck in whenever we need to. Of course, the fact that it's a first-class cabin with a huge bathroom and shower had nothing to do with it. Normally I don't carry so many things around, but it would have been suspicious if I'd come aboard with nothing but a rucksack whilst pretending to be the daughter of a wealthy family. I got this necklace from my father. It's supposed to remind me that money isn't the most important thing in life. If all you've got is this penny, as well as family and friends, then you're a very rich girl, he said. I'll take it with me. It'll bring me luck. I always try to carry as few personal items as possible. If my things are ever searched, they won't reveal my true identity. I don't like wearing hats, but they do fit the role. And I have to admit that the day in London when we shopped for Patricia Mayers was a lot of fun. It happened pretty fast between us. It was magic when we first met. Birds of a feather flock together, and he can be very charming. I got this necklace from my father. It's supposed to remind me that money, if all you've got... I could jam the penny in and make a kind of improvised screwdriver. Why not? it. I just hope that this is the right shaft. 
here goes nothing. Ah, Jakob Aust. I finally got you. I'll have them arrest you and justice will be done. Can I be of assistance, madam? Yes, you can get out of the way. Shall I tidy up, madam? No, it's time to celebrate. Excellent. The coast is clear. The Baroness wrote something down and took the slip of paper with her. Oh, it's probably not important. It seems like she was searching for a specific photo and that she actually found it. Jakob Aust, now I've got you, she said. We got our hands on the list of passengers but I don't recognize the name. The mannequin could probably wear my clothes. It'd disappear under the Baroness's clothes, though. Not even Adil would believe that this painting was an original. He was interested in art when we first met, but for him it was always about the content, not the technique. I had my work cut out, teaching him to concentrate on the stroke, the material, and the signature of the artist. It's the only way to distinguish an original from a fake. I don't care who painted it as long as it speaks to me, he said. A perspective that, as an art thief, I can't share, but it's charming nonetheless. No, the Baroness and Inch aren't working together. He wouldn't hide the jewel in her handbag. Far too many hiding places for a jewel. But Inch said something about a combination. That sounds like a little safe or a hidden compartment. And she wouldn't have something like that in her suitcase. No. Inch said he hid the eye in the Baroness's luggage, which makes sense. He can't be certain that he'll have the chance to hide it again when we arrive in Cairo. Impressive for a quick drink on the go. Gin, whiskey, liqueur, sherry, vodka, brandy, and champagne. Every bottle is at least half empty. A suitable glass for every occasion. But most of them look more or less unused. The Baroness probably disregards style and etiquette when she's drinking alone and just uses the same glass. Hmm, more bottles. Might be the good stuff. What's that? A small leather strap. Aha! Hmm, Nefertiti, Guernica, A.D., Buonarotti's Adam. This could be a memory aid for the Baroness. And it would explain how Inch discovered the combination. I'm going to copy the hints. Hmm. As I see it, I have to decipher these clues to find three of the symbols. Then I can guess the fourth. Well, Nefertiti was an Egyptian queen. The monogram and the two other clues aren't much help. To me, it looks like a combination lock. A good one, too. The door only opens when the right symbols are in place. I'd put money on the eye of the Sphinx being behind this door. I don't think anyone would bet against me. Corkscrew, bottle opener, coaster. I can't use any of these. Some napkins and towels. Nothing I can use. There are outlines of animals. A dog, a cat, a bear, and a rooster, amongst others. Eight symbols per cylinder. That means more than 4,000 possible combinations. 
I've copied the hints into my diary. Maybe someone on board can help me to figure out at least three of the four symbols. I'd prefer to lock the door. Someone could come in and catch me at any moment. But it's important not to leave a trace. Inch absolutely cannot find out about us. I must hurry. No. I'd better leave the cabin as I entered it. Somebody might see me if I go out through the door. Close. 